YouTube. Okay. Friends, family men, family, people, countrymen, countrywomen, country animals, whatever. Um, okay, so people are asking, like, about my binder. All right. Um, I really should just grab it and bring it in, but I'm pretty sure I've got it all up here. Um, my binder is an interesting thing. So good question. Um, user 57102, now whatever it is, at Hotmail, whatever. Um, thank you. My binder has everything in it, okay? It has a scan of how I filed my passport um, before I actually sent it off. So actually the paperwork, I scanned it, put it in there. My driver's license being turned, returned, canceled, and a state ID issued. I have that in there. A picture of my plates being turned in. The sale slip um, sheet for, pardon me, I know this is kind of ghetto. Um, the sale sheet for me selling my vehicle to myself and the country of Ladonia as a private citizen, and I'm the authorized agent. That's in there. Um, I then have my information on my personal affidavit of saying that I am a state citizen. I am a, uh, a national. Um, all that information I have in there notarized. Everything is notarized and put in my binder. The date I became a citizen of Ladonia, um, I believe I there's you can print it off or you can do a screen capture of it. I once I got accepted, I printed that. That's in my binder. Um, and now we get to the funner parts. All right. So on my in my binder on the outside sheet, slid underneath the sleeve. It says um, to our um, friendly officers of the law. Um, he, contained in within this folder. And then I listed all the things I just told you. Oh, hold that thought. I also have a, a sheet in there where uh, I downloaded off the internet and it states driving versus traveling. Um, Supreme Court declares that a person can travel in their personal automobile for private uses on public roads. Okay, it's like... 12 or 15 sheets. Um, it goes through all the laws and all that stuff. I highly recommend you print that, highlight certain sections, put that in there. Because then they also talk about Black Law's definition of driving being commercial. Because it used to be commercial. Well, it is commercial now, but there used to be a separate license for commercial and nothing for private. Then when they combined it, it all became corporate and commercial which is what it is now, which is why when you drive like Uber or Lyft, you don't need to go out and get a professional driver's license. Only if you do like CDL or whatever else, because those are advanced. Okay. That's why you, you, you don't need to get anything special. Um, so I went on the state of Wisconsin's, uh, law statute, quasi statutes, um, web, uh, website, and I looked up the definition. They have a definition for all this stuff on there. Automobile, operator, all that stuff, but not for driver. Huzzah. They are clever. Somebody must have already challenged the uh, the word driving or driver. Now, they use it in there, but they don't define it. Because by law, driving is what they used to call a chauffeur. He's your driver. Okay. So a chauffeur's driver's license, okay? So they don't have it anywhere on there. I looked it up, and let me tell you, there is a huge section, okay? Yes, yes, people, I do have a lot of boring time to kill to do a lot of the stuff. Um, but not so much as much anymore, okay? You know, Got to take care of my son and bills and other things like that. But anyway... So, yes, I did go through all that. They don't have a direct definition of it. They have automobile, transportation, um, things of that nature. I think even something else. But basically, our cars, our vehicles are designated as personal conveyances, um, 
consumer goods and also personal property. They use all the words like automobile and, you know, a four tired operator of, a, you know, blah, 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 all this stuff all the way around that so that they, because if they put the definition up there for what it is legally, somebody can argue that issue. If they don't put it up there, they can just say it's an oversight. Okay. Oh, we didn't see that. Carry on. Don't tell anybody about it. Move along, Junior. You bother me. So that's basically what that is about. Um, now, the rest of the stuff in my my binder, um, okay, the ingenious parts of it. Now that I'm pretty much pulled out of the system, I mean, technically at this point in time, I'm still a non-U.S. national, okay? Um, I did apply for what I hope to be the official uh, final version of the passport where it's, you know, five stars, hopefully. Uh, but see, that's the thing. I, it could be four or it could be five. We don't really know. Um, the last one I filed a long time ago before I did some of these videos, I was three. So, but like I said in my other video, people who have done what I have already, the information I've already put out have, have gotten four stars or asterisks from their three status. So they should be listed now as a state citizen or national. I made one or two adjustments from that version recently and I refiled my DS82 and I'm waiting to see if that's going to bring it to four or five or it may not be any, I don't know. Like I said, this is all just me spending some money to try to get this right because I'm just methodical like that and um, I've been told I should be a lawyer or something. Actually, I was told by a judge I should be a lawyer when I got some of my stuff dismissed, we'll just say. Uh, but anyway, back to the binder. So. The ingenious part of that is, for me, at the bottom of it, in slightly smaller writing, but not too tiny, it's the legal size font and all that, I basically say, you know, officer, attention officer, please be advised that if your traffic stop takes more than 20 to 30 minutes, each additional 5 or 10 minutes is going to be worth $500 of my time. Because I have the right to charge for my time. And if you're pulling me over just to give me a ticket or harass me about my private plate or whatever else, and you haven't talked to your uh, commanding officer or sergeant, there's a price to pay for that. It's also, yes, seriously, that's what I have on the bottom of it. And that's why I said, just give them your binder. Do, do you see where I'm, see where I've went with all this? Okay. So, um, Bringing all this together, my time is worth something, all right? Um, and I think I even have stuff like uh, if you are, you know, writing me a ticket, be advised that I'm only going to um, sign this under duress, you know, blah, blah, blah. Once you give them your binder and they write that up in their report, they have to put all these things down that they read and that they've seen. And there's no way they're going to cover all that. All they have to do is put down, uh, yes, this person said that he was a uh, na national or something, and he gave me this binder. And if we have to go to court over it for some reason, now, you have that over them. In general, you should just send the ticket back, UCC 1-308, call it a day, especially if you have the other paperwork that I have, send that with it, leave it alone, forget about it, okay? Because you're not in their jurisdiction. If they keep trying to go back and forth with you, like I said, that's why I send that paper with any tickets then if you watch the other videos you would know what to do you set up your writ i have that information too when another another video i've got that paperwork to send in case like i said you don't need this stuff it does help in case but you don't need it um and then if i was to do a writ which is the information you you send to them which is also my my uh i send this information that when i send the ticket back I give them that piece of paper. And in that piece of paper, it says, I will provide a writ if you want to take this further, which will have these questions that you must answer, provide, providing proof of jurisdiction, proof of this, proof of that, proof of this. Do you have this available? By law, you have to provide me with this. And if the cop acknowledges in his report that he took my binder or he read my binder, that was a nonverbal agreement that 
if you read the if you read the whether he read the bottom of it or not, it says that anything over 20 minutes or anything over 30 minutes in a stop, because they are authorized to at least harass and stop you for a minute. <sighs> that anything over this time frame that's not considered reasonable. Okay, so 20, 30 minutes is reasonable for a stop under normal situations. As long as you're not running guns or something crazy, you know, whatever else, that's on you. Um, then, yeah. So, hey, yeah, I'll pay your $200 you want to say I'm driving without a license and a and a registered plate? Okay. You guys have to pay out my three thousand uh, dollar worth my time here. Um well uh okay, that's in the in the binder, but you it's not registered anywhere. Oh yeah, it is. It's well it's legal because it's in my book and it says he took my book. Oh, and if you want to back it up, it's registered with the UCC um under UCC one filing. Uh and here's my file number. It's also why I keep all my UCC filing numbers in my book, in my binder. So get yourself a binder. Now, at the end of the day, do you need all this? No, no, no. This is what I like to call in case some shit. Because um, if you need it, you got it. And it's there. It's all, it, my biggest thing about all this has been prevention. Prevent them from having a standing, a jurisdiction, a foothold, of anything. And if they and if shit hits the fan, you can say, "Well, I'm a national, not on the, I'm not a citizen. I'm a citizen of this or I have my binder. The binder says it's $1,000 for anything more than 45 minutes worth of my time. Don't be outrageous and say a million dollars a minute. Um they're not going to take you serious. What gets their attention is something that's within reason and that they go uh Private counsel, did you take his binder and read this information? Did you read at the bottom? Oh, I didn't see that. If they say they didn't see it at the bottom, either they're lying, but then they said they did have the binder, so now they're obligated. His binder does say that if you accept the binder, and you did say that you did take a look at it. Did you accept it? If they say no, then they didn't, then they didn't. Okay? But if they take it and they look at it for their own curiosity, gotcha. All right, so... That being said, and also remember, at the end of the day, if you do get a lawyer through this stuff, by getting a lawyer, you are declaring yourself to be an imbecile, imbecile, stupid, dumb, a ward of the state. This is from their own mouths. If you look up uh, legal representation of a lawyer, don't get me wrong, there's some very nice lawyers out there. I love you guys out there who are doing your job, especially for the people. Um, but... They know that through their oath, that's what you are. Their oath is to the bar. And then if you watch some other videos, you know who owns the bar. Somewhere over there where they drink a lot of tea um, and all that stuff. And then who owns them? Um, some people who are very holy rollers. Um, <clears throat> uh, so anyway, so when they take a pledge to the bar, that's their first priority. It's not you as a imbecile you are a ward of the state okay they it's also why they won't let you bring a, the constitution into the courtroom okay because it's a different jurisdiction when you walk in past those swinging doors some of those places are even designed from the outside to look like ships or like barges very squared off or oval because it represents uh admiralty jurisdiction all right um Anyway, sorry, I go on these tangents. But those are breadcrumbs, I guess, for you guys to do some more research on your own for those people going through legal situations and circumstances. And this is not legal advice. This is for educational purposes only. All right. Um, but while you're on that, if you are going through some stuff, look up jury nullifications. Okay? Something, another breadcrumb I just came across. Very interesting. Um, so that's all the stuff in my binder, guys. I highly recommend you get a binder. And get you some ICS insurance in case some shit. Um, also, that being said, if you are going to be um, traveling in your personal conveyance, you do, you are still supposed to have a bond or some type of insurance. You still can get insurance um, with your car using your passport, okay? Um, some of them you might have to do it online. If you can't do it online, you might have to actually call them. Um, so you can still have insurance, and I would recommend having it. If, this is not um, just educational purpose only, let's just say you're somebody, 
and you don't really drive tr travel in your car all that often and you can actually create your own bond okay you put your name your information on there don't use any your social security numbers or any federal numbers whatsoever because that's theirs that's fraud you will go to jail they're prosecuting this kind of stuff in the old days they didn't let's just say i got away with a lot of stuff okay uh but these days they are not playing all right trust me i've been through all this stuff just learn learn from the bad wolf all right so that being said, you create a bond by putting your own information, putting in your own number, keeping a, uh, a booklet like your binder of all this information on there, your numbers. Keep a copy of your binder inside the house, one in the car, one inside. Keep, a tra keep track of that, all right? Uh, bond issue number one, five, seven, MLB, blah, 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 okay? Uh, good for $50,000 um, of... U.S. currency or private currency and call your currency, you know, um, whatever your last name is. Who cares? Um, and then keep that in there, okay? That's your bond. That means that that's your promise to pay, okay? Like an LPN, little promissory note. Once you do that, you are able to, that, that that's your insurance, okay? That is your, your promise to pay, so... But if you get into an accident or something like that, they're going to be able to hold that and you are going to have to pay that off out of your own pocket. Or if you have filed a UCC1, like I told you in one of my other videos, um, they would have to try to come after you, okay? But they have to pay out your bond first, okay? So otherwise, then it could try to go to court and then you've got all this stuff. So I would highly recommend just get the insurance, just pay the whatever. You've been probably paying it all this time, um, but it's up to you. Like I said, this is for educational purposes. That's that's where we're at. All right, guys, that's pretty much about it. Um, so get your binder, keep your binder, put your stuff in your binder, make a copy of your binder. All right. And happy travels. Talk to you guys later. Don't forget to hit that bell, like, and subscribe on the way out. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for playing.